This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's time for one of our follow-up videos. You know, we review a lot of products. We don't get to keep them all. A lot of them are review loaners, and we have to return them within a month. Some we get to keep longer, or some, like this MacBook Pro here, I actually bought myself. So this is a follow-up on the M1 16-inch MacBook Pro with the Max processor, which means max performance, but also more heat and shorter battery life versus the 16-inch Pro model on this. So three and a half months. So what's the point of that? So to see what it's like now that the shiny has worn off, so to speak. Not literally, it still looks great. MacBook build quality isn't something that we really ever put into question. But how is it holding up in terms of compatibility, in terms of speed, performance, stability, battery life, and all those sorts of things once the novelty and the ooh and the ah has worn off? We're going to find out now. First off, no, I still don't mind that it's a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier than the previous model. It's totally worth it to me to have things like legacy ports on board and a nice big battery and all those sorts of things. And I think the thinification of the mobile workstation class of laptop was never a really brilliant idea because thermal issues, all that sort of thing, right? So I do still giggle every time I put an SD card into my Mac because of gone slotless for so long. And the HDMI port has been handy too for plugging into TVs and projectors. Not everything supports casting, you know, for example. So that's been awfully nice. I will say that between the UHS-2 card slot and macOS Monterey being a little weird, in my opinion, with removable storage, speeds will vary from card to card. Sometimes a faster card, nominally, in terms of what is rated, performs more slowly than a supposed slower card. I think this is macOS and compatibility with camera file systems and other things like that. Speaking of which, you've probably heard if you own a Fuji camera that there's going to be a macOS update just to handle having more than 4,096 images on a card because otherwise they could kind of go MIA when you stuck them into your Mac. But obviously the biggest thing is the performance of the M1 processor, the Pro and the Max versions here, and how much they bring to the table, because you're searching for a new laptop, obviously you want the best performance bang for the buck you can get for future proofing. So you're trying to figure out which new laptop to buy. Maybe that's for a new or upgraded career. Did you know, speaking of that, that data scientists are among the top most highly paid professionals? Huh. Speaking of that, our video sponsor, Data Camp, is here to teach you the skills you need for a new career or to upgrade your existing career skills. Be it as a data scientist working with SQL and database queries to Python to spreadsheet data analysis. And they have things like new beta competitions to solve real world problems like reducing employee turnover or customer segmentation decisions. All learning happens in a browser or a phone app, your choice, so there's no need to have a supercomputer or special software to start learning at your own pace. It's low pressure with a gamified experience where learning nets you XP points. Unlock new career opportunities and become data fluent today. Use my link in the description to try out the first chapter of any course for free. And now, back to our video. So yes, the M1 Pro and Max chips are still all of that. The benefits are still there. Sometimes, you know, it's interesting with laptops. You get a laptop, you test it, you beat it up for two weeks and it's fine, and then somehow the thermals start to degrade. Could it be the thermal paste or something else? OS updates, who knows what it is. But anyway, in the case of this one, no, it hasn't suddenly gotten hotter. It's still a delight. I had just about stopped using Lightroom Classic because it was just such a pig on my old conventional Intel i9 based 16 inch previous MacBook Pro. Yeah, the fan was roaring, that whole thing. I thought, oh my God, I'm killing my machine and I'm certainly not going to upgrade to a Sony A7R4 or even an A7 IV with 33 megapixels and anything like that or a Canon R5 higher megapixel camera. And now it's just a delight. Everything is so bloody fast. I use Samsung T5 external SSDs with it typically to store the Lightroom files on there. Uh, but oh my God, it's just wonderful. It's instantaneous. I don't hear the fans. I mean, yeah, it's still good in that respect. Great. In fact, great. And in fact, the M1 processor is still the one to beat in 2022. Yes, I know Intel 12th generation H series core i7 and i9 processors have just hit the market, mostly right now, like at the MSI Raider big desktop replacement gaming laptop. But that's telling about that too, because Intel, even though they've gone to the big little architecture, so you have some low power cores, efficiency cores, and performance cores, if you look at the amount of power and heat 
that are generated getting that performance where it meets what this MacBook Pro can do max and sometimes even exceeds it by a little bit, not a huge amount. I, they're using like three times as much power. So what does that mean? You need a bigger, beefier chassis for cooling. You're going to have more heat to the touch. You're going to have more fan noise. Your electric bill is actually going to be higher. And nobody can touch this when it comes to that. And that's still certainly in the case. And even what AMD is going to be offering this year, which is certainly better than Intel in terms of heat and power consumption isn't close to this. This is just actually what mobile workstations and laptops were meant to be, right? The idea is you can take them around without them burning the hair off your legs or making your fertility, you know, in jeopardy there. And you should be able to use it unplugged for a good amount of time, right? Not, oh, look, it went for three hours, but yay, it's the new Intel 12th Gen Core i9, you know? So this is what a laptop is supposed to be still, something that's mobile, portable, not a toaster oven on steroids. The beautiful mini LED display continues to delight me. It's very bright. Glare is well controlled for a glossy display. I do kind of wish Apple would still offer a matte option like they did, what, a decade ago or something like that, but delightful. The only thing that's not delightful is the notch. It's funny, like on the iPhone, it's true. It kind of disappeared. My brain doesn't even think about it, but somehow on the Mac, I can't unsee it. It's still there. And also because I have so many little icons up there, up top, sometimes they do run off and into the notch and into, well, basically oblivion. If they had actually given us face ID, at least as a, a, a trade-off for this, then I might have been happier with it. But no face ID, so not happy me. So that sounds all great. So has life been perfect? No, not so much. Particularly, I've noticed more bugs with the M1 versions of the Adobe CC apps. Photoshop, for example. Lightroom has actually been mostly okay. Photoshop, Nick filters, those sort of things. And Adobe Photoshop, strange like checkerboard artifacting in my image after I apply an unsharp mask or a mystery line that appears, things like that. Now, Adobe updates constantly and I see fewer and fewer of these, but they're still there, whereas I just don't see that on my Intel-based machines. And, you know, a few other specialty things. For those of you who are artists and you're using Wacom Cintiqs, for example, those drivers still need a little love because they can lead to more crashing, I've noticed in Photoshop. Premiere is actually more stable than Photoshop right now. Go figure. Final Cut is still just amazing. Again, you just don't really even hear the fans working with 4K footage like we do. It's delightful. Now, most of the time when I use my Mac, I have it plugged into my desktop to a 4K monitor, either an LG or a BenQ over USB-C connection. So that also used to generate a lot more heat with Intel-based Macs, and no problem here with that sort of thing. That said, there's still a reason to go with Intel or AMD if you're a gamer. This is still really not a gaming laptop. It's not about the GPU performance, although, you know, it's certainly no RTX 3080 level, no matter what Apple says in most cases. Uh, it's about compatibility. So you're looking at ARM architecture here. And today's AAA titles, everything you want to play for PCs, for Windows, basically, is looking for x86 architecture, not the ARM version of Windows. Certainly not running emulation of x86 on the ARM version of Windows. Windows. So if gaming is an important part of what you want to do, this still isn't the machine for you unless you can afford to have two separate machines, one for gaming and one for your portable Mac kind of deal going on. Also, it's still just a vanilla, boring laptop. It may be beautifully put together with great quality control and all those things we expect from Apple, but for those of you who are creatives and you're looking for things like a pen, a convertible design, that sort of thing, there's still the... Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio, 14-inch. Okay, that's more like the 14-inch MacBook Pro size, but still hear me out there. So you've got a fairly powerful machine. It's a four-core CPU. It's not as powerful a CPU as the Mac, but if you're not doing anything beyond Photoshop and Lightroom and all that sort of thing, and even some Premiere, it's still just fine. You've got a nice NVIDIA dedicated GPU, but most importantly, it's a convertible design, so you can turn it into a tablet, and you've got the pen functionality, and it's a pretty good pen. So with the Mac, you're looking at using an external Wacom Cintiq. You could sidecar with an iPad, I guess, just to get the pen input and the touch and the, all that sort of thing going. So in that respect, it's, Apple's still not changing. It's a boring conventional laptop. Other little, little problems I know and bugs and things like that. Touch ID sometimes just doesn't want to work if the machine's been asleep for several hours. I don't know why this is. Unlocking with the Apple Watch works just great, but every once in a while, again, after a long sleep, or maybe I've left the house and come back in, and it just says, signal's too weak from the Apple Watch. And I'm standing right in front of the machine. I've been in front of the machine for like five minutes before I even tried to wake it up. So there are these little things that Apple's going to keep working on. They're not really major 
serious problems though, but they, uh, some of these itsy little growing pains are still there. So there you have it, 16 inch MacBook Pro with the Max processor inside. Would I do it again? Given the druthers, if I could change my mind now, yes, I would. This is the best Mac Apple has ever made. As long as you don't really need to run Windows with strong x86 performance on it, it's, it's still fantastic, which is great news. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.